What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we got a very special guest. We got somebody that's from the Bay. Somebody who, ball player, ball player. You feel me? Somebody who real big in the community is doing his thing. Uh, an advocate for the community. Big time public speaker. Arthur Renowinski, a.k.a. Hey. Arthur Inspiration. What's up, my boy? Oh my welcome to the podcast. Happy to be here, man. Happy Appreciate to be here. It. Big fan of you and what you're doing, man. And, uh, you know, the spinal cord injury community. And just like in the world in general, you yeah. know, promoting positivity, um, showing love to our community. And mm -hmm. just, you know, this is dope. So I'm happy to be on this podcast right now. Uh, hey, look, man. Hey, look, I appreciate you being the first person that, you know, I'm doing a in-person interview with. You know, me and you, we've been together for the whole weekend. We went to the um, Abilities Expo, got to try out some stuff, filmed a whole bunch of content. We're going to be dropping a vlog about that. Mm -hmm. So, man, look, I had, a, I had an amazing weekend with you, bro. Definitely a weekend to remember. I, I mean, know. these Abilities Expo, anybody watching that's never been to yeah. Abilities Expo, and you have some type of disability, whether that's, you know, any kind of disability. Mm -hmm. This is the place to be. Um, you know, we got some some great stuff today. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, this is uh this is dope. You got you got us at the Intercontinental on the fiftieth floor. Like I this know. is a vibe. You know, I know what I mean? Yeah, like, hey, hey, that's what I try to do, man. Uh, what I really wanted to do is I really wanted to show, you know, you what uh a luxury wheelchair accessible room looked like. You know. Um, this right here, like he said, we're shooting from the Intercontinental in downtown LA. We're in a wheelchair accessible king suite with the rolling shower. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about the room? Like, I how do you feel about it? It's perfect. I mean, everything's set up right. I mean, mm -hmm. you got super spacious, you know, uh, open floor plan. Yeah. Uh, you got the bathroom is immaculate. The mm -hmm. shower bench. Yeah. Uh, really, in just like. Being able to roll in the shower, roll in to the you know bathroom area mm -hmm. is what it, what's most important. Grab bars here and there. So yes. this, is, I mean, and then the view you just can't even beat the view. You yeah, got the exactly. whole downtown LA to look over. Like exactly, you know. A lot of the times, whenever we book these uh, wheelchair accessible rooms, they're like <laughs> super small. Yeah, you, uh, it's not that much space. Even though they are sometimes bigger than the average room, when you're in a wheelchair, you know, space matters. All right, right. space matters. Mm -hmm. um, the, the way how you move around the room matters. You know, sometimes I, I book a room and I can't even go on, you know, the far side of the room because the bed takes up, you know, all the space and I can't even get over there. So I'm just stuck to one side of the room. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but in this room right here is it's an open floor plan. It's, it's huge. It's 750 square feet. We're on the 50th floor. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy view. You know, I just wanted you to see that. I wanted you to experience it. So I appreciate you coming on the podcast. And, yeah, my man, let's get into your story. So, you know, tell us what type of person was Art growing up. Like, what was you into? Like, was you into any sports? Like, what was you doing growing up? I was big into sports. Like, mm. I played every sport you could think of. Basketball was my first love. Football, baseball, track and field. I even <laughs> messed around, did, like, kung fu with my brothers. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. just any sport we can get into, we was out there doing, you know. Uh, yeah. Very active. Like, literally, like, my mom would just pick us all up from school, take us to practice, yeah. You know, and just was real supportive. So I, I grew up with uh, you know, parents that were young, but they mm -hmm. they did their they did their absolute best. Uh, my dad was in the military, so what branch? He was uh he was in the, he was in the army and he was in the air force. What he served? For, yeah, two branches. Yeah. For real? Oh, so we switched branches. Mm -hmm. You, I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's not that many people are able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was in the air force. Yeah. So you know, yeah. trust me, I'm pretty sure he was. In the army and probably went to the air force. And you know it's crazy. We had this with this talk before, but I was born in Minot, North Dakota, and then because uh, my dad it was on the air force base, me and my yeah. brothers, and you went there to go speak. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, yeah. And you told I'd never been there before since I was only there until I was two. <laughs> we moved back to the bay. You told me there's absolutely nothing out there. <laughs> nothing so, out there. So uh, yeah, I lived there till I was two. Okay. Minot, North Dakota. Know nothing about like I I don't remember it at all. But uh, my parents moved back to the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, I pretty much, you know, been there uh, in the Bay, you know, just working and, and doing, you know, living my life. But uh, mm -hmm. the Bay means a lot to me. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's where I grew up pretty much. Yeah. Uh, we did move around a lot, but stayed in the Bay Area. But I did live in like Vallejo. Um, if you don't know where Vallejo is, Vallejo is where like E-40s from. Okay. Uh, I lived in um, Oakland, mm -hmm. San Leandro. Okay. A so I've moved around a lot in the Bay Area, but uh, yeah, grew up in the Bay Area. Playing, played a lot of sports. Um, so 
you know, just making sure I was on top of my grade, so I was eligible to play. Yeah. But I was like, no, like you know, yeah. super serious about it, about like the, like you know, head in the books type of thing. Yeah. Chuck, but, me too. Me too. And uh, but, but I I had to get what I I had to get it done and mm-hmm. and make sure I was on point. Yeah. But uh, so through high school, you know, I, I really focused on football, playing cornerback and running back. And just like it's nothing like those Friday night lights. Just like, yeah. just these lights right now on this, on doing this right now. It just kind of like it reminds you of that. It reminds me of just like that, gr- <laughs> that smelling that grass. You know what I mean? Like, you know, putting on those those pads and our helmet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just uh, getting ready for for the week through football uh, for for the Friday night games, going against our rivals. Like I miss that. I love that. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, the craziest injury I had before, like while I was high school, mm-hmm. I pulled my hamstring, and that was the most painful thing ever. Ooh. You know, but hey, ooh. little did I know, like what two, two, three years later, mm-hmm. I would, you know, have a, uh, you know, a serious injury, like a really serious injury. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I, I love playing sports, uh, and then I was in college, um, and. You know, was was playing uh, football JUCOs. Okay, and then from there, it's just like that's where my my you know real life yeah. story started was mm-hmm. when I just turned twenty years old, where my life completely changed. Okay, now getting into that day, was there anything off about that day? Did anything feel different? You know, th- than the normal day? It was a Friday. Okay, uh, I was feeling good. You mm-hmm. know, and. I did at one point get, uh, you know, like, uh, this feeling like, you know, should I go out, you know, or, you know. Um, but I'm 20 years old. It's a Friday night. I'm just like. Yeah, you trying to party. Go out, have a good time, you know. Mm-hmm. And you never think that these type of things could happen. To but you. To you, especially at that age. But, you know, obviously yeah. now we know you anything can happen like mm-hmm. any literally anything you can yes. anybody can get paralyzed mm-hmm. anybody can get shot anybody yes. can get in a car accident like you know it, it can happen to anybody so i'm having a good time vibing um mm-hmm. and uh i end up leaving around like 12 30 ish and uh was there a reason why you left early um yeah i was going to go you know meet up with with some, you know Okay, <laughs> and uh, and I, I I was leaving, so I ended up leaving, and there were what you know PD things that people possibly plotting on robbing people coming out of the nightclub, mm, intoxicated, okay. whatever you know. Okay, so there were okay, so people come out intoxicated, they may have like their wallet or whatever. Exactly. So it's like a you know, there's like a lot of reports around that area. There's a lot of like nightlife club area okay. stuff. So okay, so you're in a nice area. And mm. you're coming out the bar or a club or whatever, mm-hmm. and there are people that come to that area that exactly. plot on robbing they're, people coming out. They're these not areas. from that area. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so okay. Okay. So and 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 that's to, where your and that's where your story starts at right here. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And you know, I don't know that for a fact. That's just like what what yeah. what is reported and whatnot. But mm-hmm. it, to this day, my shooter hasn't been found. It's Sixteen years. So it's like, yeah. you know, it's just uh, paperwork on SFPD's desk. You know, this probably just buried at this yeah. point but you know uh yeah wrong place at the wrong time situation mm-hmm. and that was the last time walking out of that club that i would ever walk again on my own power mm. and when i think about that it's like one minute you just dancing jumping around walking having yeah. a good time and in the next second you are just completely fighting for your life uh, with a bullet inside you and internal bleeding, you can't breathe. Uh, it was, it's just like life just changed in a yeah. second. So as you leave in the club, mm-hmm. are you walking to like the parking lot or anything, or are you walking to like the front of the club, the back of the club, like like where are you walking to where this person is able to come up on you and pretty much get the drop on you? Yeah, so there's like a the club. There's a there's a there's a parking lot where you like go out. Mm-hmm. You walk right, and then there's a parking lot. Yeah. But it's a big, like, kind of, like, darkish parking lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then there's another street. There's an alleyway. So it is San Francisco in that area. It's, uh, it's a lot of little side streets and stuff like okay. that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, a young person, I'd imagine looking back, like, trying to guess his age, mm-hmm. 
I mean, this kid had to be no older than 21, 22 years old. He looked very young. Yeah. Um, and it was like just how he moved. It's just like, you know, it's got to be a young a young yeah. person. So um, Reckless. Yeah, just reckless. young, reckless. You know, if you just like, I live in that life and you just running around like, you know, sticking up people, you know, shoot people like, you know, you you're not getting the, you're not getting the right support. You're not getting the right love. You're not getting the right guidance. Mm-hmm. And you know, when people ask me like, well, "What do you think about your shooter?" Honestly, like I used to, that used to really mess with me. That I I never I I, I will I, to this day I don't know the person who put me in this position who paralyzed me. Yeah, uh, and that used to eat me up in the beginning a lot after my injury. It was like. The only way I could move on and live in peace in my own, like, my heart, soul, my whole everything yeah. is to, like, one night I lit a candle, uh, I played some some instrumentals, some mm-hmm. some music, and I just wrote a letter. Yeah. And it was a letter to my shooter, and it was just like, I forgive you. And uh, from there, um, good things started happening. Mm-hmm. And I was able to really, like, Put that behind me because it would really, yeah, eat me up, man. Okay, so so as you leaving the club, does he come up behind you or does he come up like to the front of you? Like, he, how, how does he approach you whenever he comes up to you as you leaving the club? He he's at this point kind of following me. Oh, I seen him oh, once and I turned around. He's follow, oh, he's following you. Yeah. Okay. So I turn around once I seen I seen. It's looking suspicious in a way. Yeah. Um, and then turn around and, you know, that's boom, happens. And that bullet, like I said, shot me, ran up on me, robbed me. The bullet went through my chest, hit both of my lungs, and obviously hit my spinal cord. Mm. Um, and still lodged to me to this day. It's just walled off inside of me. So they said, you know, I asked, why can't we get the bullet out? And it would. They told me my, their answer was it would cause more damage to go yeah. try to fish it out. So okay. that's just like something I'm gonna always have with me. Like I can't get MRIs or mm-hmm. things like that from the gravity, you know, yeah. shifting in my body. So okay. So whenever he comes up to you, does he say anything to get your attention to get you to turn around or anything, or does he just come up on you, come in front of you, and then just shoot you? No, it was. Uh, it was. Oh man, this shit hard to talk about, bro. Like <clears throat> this, I don't know. I'm just like really going back now, man. My, yeah. And uh, I don't really like mind talking about, but it's just like that moment was just, you know, like I do this a lot, man. I speak about it a lot. You know, I I speak about it at high schools, juvenile halls, but in that exact moment, man, it's just so. It, it's 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 really challenging to think about right now, and I don't know why, bro. Do you just feel like it's just, it's just so much fear in that one moment in your life where it's just like one second you're okay, and then the next second like you're just fighting for your life, like that's that's where my life completely changed. And I just like I explained it to where I'm like, unfortunately it happened, but fortunately it did happen to me because yeah. I wouldn't be doing the things I'm doing. Living a lifestyle I'm living right now, mm-hmm. and you know, meeting great people like yourself, bro, and uh, people in our community that yeah. give us motivation, and inspiration to keep going. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, you do a great job of that, like representation and not being of you know fearful of like being you and sharing your story yeah. and. Uh, just, pre- just pretty much becoming a victim of my circumstance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just becoming a victim of just being in a wheelchair. Because like I told you before, it's like, you can be you can be out of the bed going, you know, out and about, but you can really be stuck in the bed mentally. You can be stuck in the house mentally. Like, I've been there. Yeah. You know, where you just didn't, you really just didn't leave that space. You know, like, even I'm, even like, I'm out and about, I'm at the grocery store, but I'm, ne- I'm like, I'm not there physically i'm not there mentally it's like i like i've been there yeah yeah so yeah so okay so when he shoots you you said the bullet goes through your chest it hits both your lungs both my lungs both your lungs and then it's lodged 
I mean, hit my spinal cord. Hit your spinal cord, and then now it's lodged, and it's yeah. still lodged in my body. Yeah, lodged into your body. So when that happens, do you just immediately drop? Immediately, and my, I'm immediately paralyzed at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, hit the floor. Yeah, and I can't breathe. Uh, like I'm like a fish out of water. Yeah, and I'm just on my back, and um, you know, from there it's just survival. Just I'm thinking I'm gonna die, but at the but there's that little like light at the end of the tunnel where it's like, damn, I can't give up. Like I I I got I gotta get. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get through this, but I, yeah. I, but I'm not gonna lie, if you. You get shot in the chest, man, like that. There's, I mean, you're you're gonna have those those minds creep in your head, like, man, I, this 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 could be it. Like, yeah. I feel like anybody that gets shot, period, the first thing that goes to their head is, I'm gonna die. Like, you think that, yeah, you think that, but then you automatically think, I don't want to die. Yep. You know, because you know, if it goes somewhere, one, if it goes somewhere in your body, like that's scary period, but you already know if it goes somewhere in your chest area, mm. like you already know, like, like they're really going to have to go through and like, like you fish it out, like, you know, just something like it's going to hit something in there. Yeah. And for you, it hit your spinal cord, both of your lungs, and then it landed in your liver, you said? In your liver it's or somewhere in that? Liver, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, and they can't take it out because it'll do more damage. To try to, try yeah. to cut through and, and get it. So it's um, okay. something I'm going to just have with me. I have an x-ray uh, at my house that, you know, is uh, yeah. shows the bullet there. So it's like just a constant reminder, like, you know, that we got a second chance. Yeah, My wheelchair is a second reminder every day. Every day. We go to bed next to it. We wake up to it. Yeah. We throw it in our cars. You know, we are, this is like an extension of our body now. Mm-hmm. So. It's never that thought of our of my story at least yeah. like is never gonna leave to to let me know that I I'm here like I have a second chance and yeah. this is the reason why and I got to be grateful for this wheelchair because yes this chair gets me around yes. anywhere and everywhere I want to go I need to go and without it mm-hmm. you know I'm stuck I'm on a couch yep. and I can't move and quality I, of life would be way different we saw our boy yes. you know Damien. At the uh, Billy's Expo, yeah, and I I had my chair destroyed in, in L.A. where I was, you know, I had my wheelchair, you know, uh, ran over, <laughs> and but, somebody ran over your wheelchair. Yeah, like how? But I had a. How speak- did somebody? How did somebody? Okay, run? okay yeah. how are you out your wheelchair? First of all, I'm gonna explain. It's it's a crazy story, and this is actually how I met my friend Paulie Perret. Okay, so this is like 2013. Okay, Damn, we come 11 years ago. I'm doing a speaking engagement mm-hmm. uh, at UCLA campus. Okay. Uh, two of my boys end up uh, coming with me. They take me, we're driving in. A, my boy has an SUV, um, my boy Mateo. Mm-hmm. And he throws, uh, we end up parking. We're on the, the right side of the road, right? Yeah. So I get up on the street side because there's a, that you know area where the wheelchair can't really properly yeah. get there unless you're like right on the curb. Okay. So- my boy Mateo comes out, opens my door, puts the chair there, and then he, uh, my other friend Jared is there. Mateo walks off. He's on just waiting on the on the curve. Mm-hmm. My boy Jared is like, "Yo!" Like he's turning around. He's seen a, a a charter bus coming straight out. He's like, "Yo, that bus is like coming fast, like straight at us." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, not thinking anything. Like, oh, okay, like they're not gonna hit us. The dude comes up, the, the driver ends up coming cl- even closer, and I'm, like, um, transferred in the chair, but my legs are still in, and he's like, yo, move, jump in, and I, like, I'm like, what? And it's coming straight at us, so I jump in the car. Oh, my God. I think I would have froze, bro. I jump in the car. Thankfully, my legs were, or else yeah. I'd be dead, but my legs were in, so I just jumped in. Oh, okay, okay. Or my legs would have got okay. cut yeah. off something, bro. Yeah. But I launched my body back in. My my boy ends up, like, getting behind the door, and yeah. the door, like, crushes him a little bit and fractures his ribs, and he has oh to go to the hospital. God. We both went to the hospital and uh, had an you know, ambulance take us and whatnot. Yeah. But, like, that incident was crazy. Uh, for, like, three days I was out here, I didn't have a wheelchair, so they had to pick me up. 
and bring me couch to couch. But oh, Damien like God. seen it on 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 you know seen it online, and I never met him. He's like, bro, I, I got a I got a backup chair. Like we yeah. can link up. We we linked up at Chicken and Waffles over <laughs> Roscoe's. Yes, at yeah. Roscoe's, and okay. uh, he ended up giving me the chair, and I ended up using <laughs> it. And okay. I, I'm forever grateful for that for that guy, man. Okay, it's a good dude right there. And yes, uh, of course, yeah. Shout out to Damien. Yeah, and so yeah. like yeah, shout out to Damien, and then. So they end up, I, I end up driving back to the Bay, right? And mm-hmm. I'm like so upset because the dude kept driving. He didn't even stop. Oh, he didn't even stop? So like no. hit and run? Hit and run in a big charter bus. It's on the oh news. Oh, my God. So like, so check this out. So we not knowing who did this. I'm frustrated. My wheelchair is damaged. I'm driving back to, to the Bay Area with yeah. my boy Jared mm-hmm. um, from L.A. And we're on the five. And I'm like, bro, like, I don't know what to do. Like, mm-hmm. And this is like I don't know. My social media wasn't really, you yeah. know. So I was like, I'm gonna call. The, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to the news. And I call uh, ABC Seven LA Hotline Newsline. Mm-hmm. I tell him what happened. Elix Alex Michelson, who's now you know he's a big reporter. Yeah, he ends up contacting me about it, and um, and uh, Paulie Perret, who's an actress on NCIS. Mm-hmm. Seen it. She's watching the news. So we did a Zoom call from the Bay Area when I got home. Told him what happened. My wheelchair mm-hmm. was destroyed. I have a loner chair now. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ends up doing like a whole story about you know my story where I got paralyzed and how you know this hit and run happened. Okay. Harley Perret ends up watching the ten o'clock news, seeing that hits me up on Twitter. It's like, yo, I love your story. I love what you're doing, and I want to get you a new chair. And what? from there, we just been like best friends ever since. That's crazy. Yeah, then it hit me up on Twitter, and it's it's just I didn't know I didn't know I didn't didn't know who she was, mm-hmm. and um, never really watched the show NCIS before knowing yeah. her, but I ended up you know seeing who it is because mm-hmm. she verified and, and had like half a million followers, and I was like, oh damn, okay, <laughs> okay. and she's just uh, been a supporter of mine and the foundation ever since. But okay. just crazy story, like okay. without your wheelchair, you can't do nothing. Like exactly, and that's what I that's what I tell people all the time who they have a problem with the wheelchair, they hate the wheelchair. Yo, your wheelchair allows you to live a better quality of life than if you didn't have it. Facts. Than if you did, I was it. that person for mm-hmm. for right after my injury for the first year or two. Yeah. I was depressed. Uh, I hated my wheelchair. I didn't even want to like be around anybody with wheelchairs. Me either. Me like, either. I was like, I don't want to be friends with you just because we in a wheelchair. Like, exactly. But that was a dumb mindset for me. It, you know what? The same it, to me, it put me in so many positions that I know I wouldn't have been in if I would have just took the help that they were trying to give me. Like my my uncle, he was in a wheelchair, and it, you know, it's, it, as soon as my stuff happened. He um he was trying to reach out and I was ignoring the phone call and then he ended up passing away. I never got to speak to him. Mm. Never got to speak to him. Mm. Yeah. So I feel like him. I feel like uh sorry to hear that. Oh, no. I feel like everybody who's new, like yeah. you could be fresh out of a coma like us. Mm-hmm. You should get paired with a great mentor. Yes. And that could be challenging because you know just people are busy or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's so important to have the right mentor in your life. I got I got some OG mentors been in the game for forty years paralyzed you know yeah uh, thirty years twenty years and mm-hmm. they still going strong still going strong still going strong man okay. like okay now now getting back to your incident yep. that day that night after he shoots you what happens from there so after he shoots me um, I'm getting just robbed, thinking I'm gonna get. If I get shot one more time, I'm gonna die. Yeah. One headshot, one more shot to the chest. My body is just like one bullet already at this point did all of this damage to mm-hmm. me. So, man, um, that was another. That's another hard moment to think about. Just like, yeah, that was man. Because mm-hmm. uh, I seen, because I watched uh, some videos that you had on. I watched some videos that you had on YouTube, and. This guy comes up out of nowhere and just just shoots you for no reason, goes through your pockets, mm. and takes $20. Mm. $20. All that for 20 bucks. All that for 20 bucks, man. I'm a I'm a college kid coming out of out of an 18 over like nightclub. Like, but you know, it's like 
this stuff happens all the time. It does. Uh, you know, gun violence is is just mm-hmm. it's just plagued so many families, so many parents, so many young people that like you know, it's it's uh it's just heartbreaking cuz I I've experienced it. I know how it feels yeah. and it's happening every day. Yeah. Uh you know, I I go and visit a lot of young people. Yeah. In, in the Bay Area that are just waking up out of a coma that are paralyzed, you know, mm-hmm. due to census gun violence. Yeah. Um and that was a prime example of census gun violence, you know, um you want to just start shooting and being reckless, like, and you don't even know the repercussions and the the life, the the changes you are making in somebody's life. Yeah, from one one bullet, you know what I mean, for twenty bucks. Yeah. So, okay. So, as you land there, after he gets done rob you and everything, are there? Is there people around? Like, is there anybody that sees what's going on? Does anybody come try to help you or anything? Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously shots go off. Shot yeah. go off. Because uh, normally when shots go off, people run. Yeah. Yeah. They don't run to the shots. Mm-hmm. They run away from the shots. So does anybody look and see what's going on, and then they come over there and see you on the ground? Mm-hmm. See me on the ground uh, and immediately, obviously, call 911. Yeah. Thankfully... San Francisco General Hospital is not too far, mm-hmm. and it's the biggest like trauma yeah. hospital. Okay, on that side of the bay in San Francisco, uh, the paramedics man were exceptional. Like, yeah. uh, I owe my life to those paramedics. They they were so professional, and they calmed me down, put me you know on a stretcher, mm-hmm. and immediately hit the gas. <clears throat> Are you in pain? You know, it's like I'm. It's so much adrenaline going through your body that, like, like I skydived, bro, like, yeah. twice. And it's, like, that doesn't even, like, compare to the adrenaline that was running through my body. You know what I mean? I've been in a championship game before. Like, this is just, like, mm-hmm. the adrenaline was just, like, it was, un- I can't even really describe, like, how, how, how much that was, like, affecting me. But, yeah. uh... I do remember being in the ambulance, and I do remember saying these words to the paramedics. Please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. And I just kept repeating that. And they just assured me, like, no, you're going you're gonna to make it, Art. You're going to make it, Arthur. Don't yeah. worry. Stay calm. Stay calm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're tearing off my clothes, you know, um, holding pressure on, on my gunshot wound and just... Speeding to get me to the hospital, yeah. uh, and uh, while I'm in the, uh, yeah, yeah, while I'm in the in the ambulance, uh, they said, you know, who can we call? Uh, I didn't want my mom getting that call at twelve thirty, one o'clock in the morning, so I told them to call my brother, uh, my brother, and I can't even like imagine what he was going through his head because if it was to be reversed, mm-hmm. that would tear me up. Just and what time is this at again? We're talking about like close to one a.m. One a.m. in the morning. So your brother, he's at home one a.m. and he gets a phone call out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Your brother just been shot. Yeah, paramedic said, "Uh, you know, your brother just been shot, and we need you to get to San Francisco General Hospital ASAP." Yeah, and that was. The whole conversation, pretty much. Now, is this an older brother or a younger brother? This is my younger brother. I got two younger brothers, and they're nine months younger than me. They're twins. Okay. Yeah, so um, my brother hangs up the phone, calls my, my mom, <laughs> yeah. and then they get to San Francisco General Hospital. So, you know, I don't remember much once I got to the hospital. Mm-hmm. I started, like, you know, kind of going in and out at this point. How would you describe it? You get shot, both of your lungs got hit. Not just one, both of mm-hmm. your lungs got hit. How would you describe that for the people watching? The best way I could describe it is like you take a goldfish out of water, you put them on the table, and that was just me, just trying to breathe, just trying to survive, just trying to, mm-hmm. man. Um, 
I had a lot of internal bleeding. And I'm losing blood. I can't. I'm not getting the oxygen I need. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going in and out of consciousness. And at this point, like I really don't know if I'm gonna survive. I really, I'm, I'm a more on the side of like, damn, this is, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm dead at 20 years old. Mm. You know. Um, so it's like, I end up, you know, going into a coma, uh, December 2nd, and. I end up waking up December, not till December 23rd, the day before Christmas Eve. December 2nd. December 2nd. That's, that's my number, man. Number two. It's like I wear that when I play with the, the Golden State Road Warriors. Yeah. Um, Dang. Yeah. It's, that's my number, man. It's like that's a so and 21 it's like, days. December 2nd to December 23rd. Yeah. And, and it's like. A second chance too. <laughs> it's like number two, like a second yeah. chance. Growing up, I was like, you never want to be number two, but that's my life day. What we yeah. call it, right? December second. Okay. And I never forget. You know, that's obviously sixteen years later. That's where I'm at. Ooh. All right. So when you wake up, is your family there? Yeah, family's there. Uh, they obviously know <laughs> the diagnosis. You know mm -hmm. what. Me being paralyzed, and I don't know, I don't know anything. I just know that I was shot, mm -hmm. and I survived. And my mindset when I woke up out of a coma was like, okay, this, I can't cut something. Right. Oh, you good? You good? Yeah. You good? What this you, fucking you? stranger shot me. I don't know him. I'm having a great time. I'm yeah. 20 years old. I'm in college. I'm living on my own. Like. Uh, shot me, and now I am uh, surviving. I I open my eyes up. I'm like, it's all good. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as a second chance, and I'm walk out of this hospital. I remember trying to move my legs with my family there with me, and I I couldn't move my legs. I couldn't twitch my toes like. Yeah. And that's where it kind of started really setting in. Yeah, It really set in, though, man, where I was able to take a shower eventually. And I'm, yeah. like, going to the shower, and I was like, okay, finally, like, no more bed baths. You know, like. Trust me, I know. No bed baths. I get to take my own warm, you know, nice hot shower. And I put the shower head on me. And it starts going down, and I feel good. You yeah. know, and then I get the shower head and I try and I'm starting to wash my legs. And I'm like, yo, what? I'm literally seeing the water hit my legs and I can't feel a thing. And that's when it hit me like, yeah, uh, this is paralysis. Yeah, man, that was, to be honest, that was the first time that I really broke down. You yeah. know, was when I finally got to take that shower. It was, it, bro, to be honest, it was. It was that it was like a almost two months. Mm -hmm. Like I like I was stinky. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you could take the bed baths, but they don't really clean you up like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like so, I just really broke down in there, and man, it was that was when it really hit me. Yeah. So, you know, when you wake up, who is it that tells you that you have a spinal cord injury? Like who's the one that comes and tells you that tells you that you're paralyzed? So the doctor comes in, yeah. You know he's got his clipboard. Um, very knowledgeable looking doctor, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I'm in ICU still. Mm -hmm. I can't speak. Uh, I have a trach in my neck. I have uh, a feeding tube going through my nose all the way down to my stomach. Yeah, on a liquid diet, you know. Uh, and. I was just thankful to be alive, but it was a roller coaster of emotions because it was like then a bomb got dropped on me after that when he told me that uh, there was pretty much just like to sum it up, there's a good chance I'd never be able to walk or talk again. So walk and talk again. Mm -hmm. Now, is that because of the trait? Yeah. You see, you see, that's one thing that they never told me. They They never told me that there might be a possibility that 
I might not be able to talk again. Mm. They just said my voice might sound different. Mm. But damn. Yeah, it was getting both of my lungs hit and my injury being so you know high. Yeah. Um, yeah. The trait, you know, it was just like they didn't know if my lungs could fully recover from it. Yeah. You know what? That's one thing that they did tell my parents. Like I think my parents had to sign something. Because they, you know, like they're having to literally cut into their to really get you that oxygen quick. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, yeah. dang. So, what does that do for you mentally? Because I know what it feels like. You know what it feels like, but they don't know what it feel like. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't, you, you can't eat, you can't drink. I mean, you can eat, but it's a liquid bag going through your nose. You're so not it, it's You're not, not the same eating. thing. No, no. It's just nutrients. Yep. So you can't eat. You can't drink. You're thirsty, like you can't, like eat, you can't craving. drink, you can't move. It, uh, yes, it, it pops out your neck. We was talking about this uh, off camera, but with a trach in your neck, there's, uh, you know, all of that gook uh, and build up. It's like gook and build up. Yeah, yeah. And um, they have to go in, and the nurse has to like clean it out, mm-hmm. and they're literally sticking like a tool. In your throat, and you have you feel everything, mm-hmm. and it's just like, please, I don't ever like, I don't want to feel that ever again. I don't want them to clean it. Look, like I didn't even care if they clean, but it would build up and it would like, yeah. it would, wouldn't be good for you. But uh, yeah. yeah, man, I had the trach in my neck. I had the, you know, no the feeding tube. I had chest tubes on both sides of my ribs, um, and I was just immobile. I was. Uh, you know, you just stuck, just stuck in one place, stuck in one place, Dang. and lose. I lost, I lost hella weight. Mm-hmm. I was pale from not being outside for you know months, and I was just yeah. didn't even recognize me when I looked in the mirror. Bro. Yeah. Like, I was, tr- tr- bro, I've been there. I know. I, I like, know, like, you don't recognize yourself. That's the scariest part when you don't even recognize yourself. But you know, you know what though. Uh, what did cheer me up? Because I like, you know, like self care, man. I like of love course. care. I, I like, I like, you know, loving on me. So like, yeah, my boy, man. Shout out to George the Bar, G the Barber. Mm-hmm. Name's George. He came to the hospital and gave me a fresh cut uh, in my hospital bed. And what? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that 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 brought a smile to my face because okay. my hair was crazy. You okay. Know? You know what? To be honest, bro, it's some of the little things like that 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 really kind of allow us to kind of get back to being us. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, that that one thing that, you know, yes, it might have broke me down, but I was just so happy to take a shower. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, like, it was like, okay. Like, yeah, like, like, we remember hurt, that. Bro. We it remember hurt. that 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 shower yes. ten, uh, over a decade ago. Yes. Okay, I, so, oh, my God, bro. It's <laughs> I, we take a lot, we've taken out of how many showers, but we remember that shower. Yeah. Like, that's when it hit me. Yeah. So, when is it that you finally get into a wheelchair for the first time? <sighs> uh, finally get up to. I finally, you know, mm-hmm. they were able to take the the trach out of my neck, yeah. and um, you know, I was able to take off. You know, get off the IVs and mm-hmm. everything. Finally, yeah. And I was transported to. Santa Clara Valley Medical Center in San Jose. Mm-hmm. Man, I love them. I owe them so much, bro. Yeah. Like, they've helped a lot of people. And that's mm-hmm. why, I, right after my injury, when I was released and started my foundation, I would always go back and do the, you know, peer support groups and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I got into a big old bulky, you know, first chair we get. Like that hospital old, chair, that's old, what we call man, it. Man, a big old bulky hospital chair. That's the, the one. Where you know they have a bunch of emergency uh, in the emergency rooms at hospitals, a big old yeah. chair is just like not ideal if you're like living in a chair. Mm-hmm. That's not that's not something that is it's really not something that's practical. That's you know? a, that's like the Paul Pierce chair where he like so, you know, <laughs> like, like nah, you know what nah, I mean. But big. like uh, it's not ideal. But I'm in a big chair and yeah. I'm like whoa, like I couldn't even like push around. Mm-hmm. The hospital without getting like tired or winded yeah. or like 
You know, it's because you got to build that that lung strength back up. That lung strength. Yes, it's it's you know really so. You know, you got blow you got blowing a little tube to get the little ball up. Oh man, you know what I mean. You, you got to exercise. That's your lung. real. That was some real therapy right there. Yeah, man. you got to exercise your lung. Mm-hmm. So you know, getting into the wheelchair for the first time, like, but how did that feel for you though? Like, like was you excited? Was you scared? Like, how did it feel for you? It was just a whole. It was just so many things being thrown at me. Uh, it is. It's so many learning lessons where you just have no choice but to try to do your best and be a sponge and learn as much as you can from the OTs, the PTs, the nurses, mm-hmm. the doctors. You know the bowel programs, the catheters, the transfers, the you know the perception of people looking at you differently when you go out in public. Yeah. Um. Just there's so much things that you being th- that are being thrown your way, but you have no other choice but to adapt or die. So. Yeah. Uh, when I got in the chair, you know, we started doing, you know, therapy and then like trying to get, mm-hmm. and they started teaching us how to do wheelies and mm-hmm. just the little things. And uh, being at, at Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, we would have, they would have us do like races around the hospital. <laughs> so like my competitive ass is like, mm-hmm. man, nobody's going to beat me. And when I first started, everybody was dusting me. <laughs> well, well. He- yeah, I think about it. Now that your lung has been affected, you kind of get tired a little, a little mm-hmm. faster until you're able to build that back up to where Not- you're able to, you know, wheel on your own. Because I remember for me, just sitting up in a bed, yeah, you know, you would just be pouring sweat, just drenched in sweat, yeah. breathing hella hard. I'd be like, "Yo, I need a fan. I yeah. need a fan." You know, like I would tell them, "Hey, look, I need y'all to turn the oxygen up on the on the tray, man. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying." Because because you really feel like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I definitely understand. Yeah. So how long is it? You know, from the time you get up, how long is it from the time you get up to the point where you're actually leaving the hospital? Uh. They gave me about a good month and a half, I would say. A month, month and, and a half, half, two months almost. Okay. Yeah. Now, in that month and a half, do you feel like you learned everything that you needed to learn to be able to leave the hospital and live a comfortable life in a wheelchair? I mean, they did they be- the best they could. Yeah. But you can never be fully ready. You have to You yeah. have to experience some things. Yeah, you um, do. You do. You, you do. know, one of the things that, like, I want to shed some light on is that when I was – Shot, obviously, you know, I got a lot of support, friends and, and whatnot mm-hmm. in the Bay Area. It was a lot of people that came out to, you know, the hospital, right, to visit me, whether it was one time or 50 times, you know, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But when I got home, oh, man, no more nurses, no more 24-7 care, yeah, uh, no more hospital visits like that. You know, you mm-hmm. got and and people in your life start stepping up where you think some people will, mm-hmm. and they don't. And the MIA, but yeah. some people you like are like, damn, like you're family, bro. And like yeah. I was just, like, I appreciate you, like, mm-hmm. and yep. that's why it's important. You know what I mean? To like love on those who truly love you yes. and have a good circle around you. Yeah. Um, that's important for recovery. You know, if you, you know, don't have the right people in your life to win and to recover, yeah, that could be the problem why you're not recovering. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the wake up call was going home yeah. and falling on the ground mm-hmm. and fighting to try to get up in my chair when nobody was around yeah. and breaking down on the floor. Asking God why me, you know, like asking my, asking just like going back, wishing I could meet this person. Yeah. And sit them down. Not mm-hmm. just sit them down, like, and ask them, like, what was going through your mind? I would want him to, like, my mo- like see what he put my mother through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, because it changed my life. And um, mm-hmm. the reason, like, I could talk about my foundation and whatnot, yeah, but of course, for my for a program that was launched it was with partnered with the Boys and Girls Club mm-hmm. of America, and we we did a teen leadership program series where it was a pilot program which mm-hmm. still runs today. This was okay. started in twenty eighteen. Okay, and uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to start it was to mentor young people mm-hmm. to where they got a safe place to be. Yeah, they're learning how to get you know money other ways from you know whether it's a corporate job or Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. entrepreneurship or the medical field or firefighter, you know, whatever it is, uh, we bring in professionals to mentor them, you know, tell them how to, you know, be a man, live life. And that, and that, that was motivated from knowing that this young person didn't have the proper love, guidance, support, you know, mentorship in his life. And that's why he did what he did. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, that that's where I get my wins. That's where that's what really like stuff like that makes me yeah. happy. Yeah. So at what point? Because you was one of the first ones that I actually seen on social media. What point during your journey do you start sharing your life on social media? Uh so I would say Facebook. Really on oh, Facebook? What? Facebook. Really. Facebook. Okay. But I was I was shot two thousand December second two thousand seven going mm-hmm. into two thousand eight once I got out okay. the hospital. But my like MySpace was still around, but Facebook <laughs> was blowing up. Like Facebook was blowing up around it, that time. Yup, that's when the wave started. Oh, so you was MySpace. on MySpace with the with the top five and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Top eight, my boy, yeah, with the time. Yes, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Hey, so, but, hey, people don't understand how serious that 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 top eight was. Hey, man, you had to you have know, you had your girl or yeah. you know your family or your best friend. You had to have them up there, and what? if. If that top eight was changed and that your girl or whatever wasn't there no what? more, they knew. Yes, yes. yeah, that boy, was, that that top eight was some serious though. Mm-hmm. That top that top eight was it was crazy. I'm I'm, I'm telling. And then if you added somebody who you know what I mean, like what I like, okay, why you added them? That's what I want to showcase to people too. It's just that you know, even though we're in a wheelchair, we ain't letting it stop us though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You see, look, this podcast right here that we're doing, like. We set this up by ourselves. Fully independent, like, bro. Independent. There's nobody behind the camera. No, I didn't so, do much. So, you did. You so did if it, so if it's messed up, if it's messed up, it's because nobody's filming from behind the camera. I had to move all the furniture by myself. You know what I mean? So I literally had to just get it, man. And bro, that like it just shows your hustle and your grind and your mindset that you're not gonna let nothing stop you, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, it's crazy how we, you know, we at the expo today and people are like, Oh, where you guys come from? And we drove here, you yeah, know. Exactly. You drove here? Yeah. Like, yeah, we drove. Mm-hmm. From yep. the bay? Like, yep. Yeah. I drove, drove with all this equipment. You drove five hours, you know, yeah. and man, it, bro, like we still get it. But, but, but could you have imagined that exactly. when you got out the hospital or when you, I when? No. Hell no. Bro, Not come me. on, bro. But you want to know what's so crazy is us doing all that, I feel like that's the whole point of the Life Goes On Foundation. And what you started. Mm-hmm. So, at what point did that make you? What at what point did did you think in your head? You know what? Let me start this foundation. And how did it? How did you get the name? The Life Goes On Foundation. Good question. Yeah. So I got the idea of it mm-hmm. literally when I woke up out of a coma. I was transferred to San Francisco General Hospital. I'm sorry, Santa Clara Valley Medical Center to okay. do my rehab for inpatient. And okay. I'm in a room with three other gunshot survivors. One paralyzed from the neck down. Okay. One paralyzed, like, in L1 area. like, yeah. And the other one, um, who was next to me, my boy Gerardo, I talked to to this day, mm-hmm. uh, he is paralyzed, like, near my, my injury. He's a T, T3 as well. Okay. And he got shot a day before me. So we were, like, really close. Uh, and he's a year younger than me. So we, okay. But it's like, I'm just, like, seeing them break down i'm i'm breaking down we were literally in this hospital room just trying to survive and dealing with not only just paralysis and trying to figure this whole new lifestyle out but like Mm. we have a you know somebody try to end our life we're thinking Mm. about you know that happening having nightmares and flashbacks from it i remember watching a movie in my hospital room and a gun and a gunshot like a gun shooting scene came on and it just like Throw me off for a second, but it's like, uh, so you I got living, you living with PTSD, man. Yeah, I was honestly, you you're honestly living with PTSD, hmm. and I feel like for, I feel like for the most part, people think that you only get PTSD when you go to war. Nah, I mean, look, you get PTSD from anything. Yeah, that's coming from vet. Yes, yes, yeah. bro. You get PTSD from anything. Yeah, uh, you went through a traumatic experience, a life changing experience, bro. A life changing experience. Yeah. You know, and you said you had nightmares. Yeah, yeah, definitely had nightmares. Uh, you know, I would wake up out of my sleep. 
I, I would have insomnia. Uh, I didn't even want to sleep at times yeah. because I was having those flashbacks. Yeah. It was times where, you know, when I would go home and I would fall on, you know, ground and try to pick myself up and I felt really uh, alone. Yeah. That, like, it was a point where I put tinfoil on my window, so it was just completely blacked out. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's just not a good way to live. Yeah. And instead of, like, back then looking at the mm-hmm. things that I do have mm-hmm. and that I, you know, the things that I can do, and I was just dwelling on on, on the bad stuff. Yeah. And that ate me up. But I don't blame myself because what 20-year-old can't you know can properly handle that without yeah. time uh you know experience support and love you know i don't I, mean? I don't think no at no age are you prepared to go through something yeah. like that at no age no I mean, age it, yep. it, 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 it doesn't matter yeah yeah so You're right about that so so tell us what's what's the goal of the life goes on foundation and what do you do Yes, good question. So I, I'm the executive director, okay. founder of Life Goes On Foundation. Okay. And our mission is to end senseless gun violence, mm-hmm. support those with spinal cord injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we end up, you know, so even supporting those that got, you know, um, other disabilities mm-hmm. as well. But, uh, and then also, you know, with our teen leadership program that was launched in 2018, uh, mm-hmm. support support our youth. Uh, okay. And really work with a lot of inner city kids from Oakland uh, and all Really throughout the Bay, but we're we're based. Uh, our program is based in uh, downtown Oakland. Okay. So. Okay. And man, I've seen some of the things that you've been doing. You know, with the foundation, because you know, like you're the face of the foundation. So it's good for you to be out there doing things, so people can really see. You know that life does go on. Yeah. So, what are some of the things that you've done since mm-hmm. you've been in a wheelchair where you would say represents the Life Goes On Foundation? Oh, that's a good question. Um. There's so many things, man. I mean, we got our 501c3 status with the state of California in yeah. 20, oh, 2009 mm-hmm. is where we're official. Like, and so now we're in 2024, like so much longevity now. Mm-hmm. And it's like so many great moments to where, you know. Um, all right. So there's one story I want to share, right? Okay. <clears throat> this was back in like 20, 2017. There's a I'm I'm leaving a speaking engagement at a, a, a junior college called Chabot College. Yeah. And um I'm pushing through the hall and I see this young kid pushing through the hall and he got a banged up chair, he got his head down, he looks you know, he looks down and um some some told me to circle back and go talk mm-hmm. to him. So I go turn around, talk to him, catch up, like, Hey, what's up, man? My name's Art. Um I'm you know, it's Art. Uh yeah have this foundation called life goes on. I'm a spinal cord injury survivor. And I like to share like first so they can open up. Mm -hmm. And if they feel like comfortable to share theirs. Yeah. So he told me open up. He's like, I'm a spinal cord injury gunshot survivor too. And he's about 18 at, you know, as a freshman. Okay. And, um, he told me he got shot 10 times at 13 years Mm -hmm. old in West Oakland. Uh, just same thing, wrong place, wrong time. He was a hooper. Uh, but, um, I told him he should get into wheelchair basketball. Mm-hmm. He he looked athletic as hell. Yeah. Like he just just needed like you know. Yeah. So we, he needed a chair. So we, with the foundation, this program that was never even thought of, but we yeah. we ended up getting him a chair, and uh, named the program after his after him the KRJ Adaptive Athlete Grant mm. Program. Okay. Uh, so it's named after him, and he took that chair and ran with it. He. He's now in his third season with the Golden State Road Warriors on our team, and last year he won a national championship with us. Uh, Ooh, okay. Yeah, so his, okay, so tell us about that though. Okay, so yeah. you are in the wheelchair basketball, you play on the go. What? What? What's the yeah. name of the team? The the Golden State Road Warriors. Golden State Road Warriors wheelchair basketball oh team, my man. God, bro, tell and, us about that though. Like, come on, man. Hey, look, hey, look, that's not average. Mm. All right, that's not average. You feel me? Yeah, you yeah. gotta, you got a ring, my boy. Yes, you feel me? You know what I mean? So <laughs> tell us about that. Though. Like, what was that journey like? Don't mean a ring. Don't mean a thing without a ring, man. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, wheelchair basketball was huge in my recovery. Yeah. Um, like I said, let me back up. When I was uh depressed, you know what I mean. Yeah, uh-huh. My brothers came up with an idea to get me out of the house one day, and they were like, "Hey, 
they got this program at BORP. BORP stands for Bay Area Outreach Pro- Recreation okay. Program in, in, in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And they deal with adaptive sports. Like, hey, they got these hand bikes. Uh, this, you know, they rent them out. Okay. Or they, they don't even rent them out. They just loan them. Mm-hmm. And we could ride around the marina and check it out. I'm like, oh, yeah. all right, whatever. Let's go. Do the hand cycling. Uh, I had a great day. I loved it. I loved me with my family and just doing that. My yeah. dog. Uh, and just riding around. And from there, I met the um, – basketball assistant coach he okay. got me in a wheelchair basketball and sh- my life just changed i went into a gym for the first time mm-hmm. and there was a player named trooper johnson who's the logo of nwba uh he was like they're like the splash brothers back then <laughs> they won in the war- road warriors history which is decades of history of wheelchair mm-hmm. basketball. they won the national championship in 01 and 04 okay and we we're able to win the third one, the third national championship in Warriors Road Warriors history last year. So mm. this upcoming uh, and next month we're gonna, you know, go back to back. Oh, oh, oh! So y'all trying to go back to back? Trying to go back to okay. back? Okay, yeah. All right, now I ain't gonna keep you too much longer, but there's one thing I want to ask you. When I say the name Eugene Yoon, mm. what does that mean to you? Mm. That's like a brother, man. That's my brother. That's not like a brother. That's just a brother. He's like a kindness, uh, spontaneous, like, uh, and just love. Like, he's he's a person that just, you know, has a lot of love to give. Mm-hmm. And he's just, a, uh, you know, uh, came up with an idea, which is crazy. Um, it made... It was made like news everywhere when it, uh, when the story was you know put out there on the CBS Evening News. But yeah. this man literally uh, went to high school with me, was in the same grade level as me, but our school was big, so like mm-hmm. we never knew each other. Mm-hmm. But um, I kept popping up on his Explore page. Okay, and I'm, I was working out like you know I had a lot of pressure around 2014, mm-hmm. 2015 because I was fundraising for an exoskeleton device which cost okay. eighty thousand yeah. dollars so i really wanted that device and he ends up seeing me like i mm-hmm. you know i'm working out he's like man i'd love to help you with your goal man to you know get back on your feet again and the way i was give, gonna you know mm-hmm. get back on my feet again was yeah. through that exoskeleton with mm-hmm. rewalk robotics and um a buddy of mine who's also a veteran and a gunshot survivor he had one and i would go to his house and i see him walking around the neighborhood and then like yeah. Yeah, I need that. I really want to get back on my feet and do that again. And um, mm-hmm. and he came. He's like, "Hey, man, like, could we grab some coffee or something and talk about it?" We go to Starbucks. This man hits me with the most outlandish stuff ever. <laughs> like, he was like, "Art, I don't know you. You don't know me, but like your story and you not wanting to give up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's God or something speaking to me where like." I want to hike from Mexico to Canada while you're training in, to get your exoskeleton. What? Fundraise this $80,000, you know, get it. We, we had a timeline to, to get it done. It's like six months oh or less. God. Yeah. 80, bro. 80. So we, fun, we, we crowdfunded on GoFundMe $80,000 to 80. get the device. We get, you know, every stop that he, that he went to from, uh, you know, San, uh, the border, TJ in San Diego. Yeah. Goes up to San Diego. The news is covering it, and then it starts building up momentum. Yeah. Bakersfield did it. You know, as he's walking, Fresno area, Yosemite, That's those news. crazy as he's walking. So he's walking for you. Yeah. He's walking for you, and the Life Goes On Foundation. And the Life Goes On Foundation. What? The mission. Yeah. Bro, he, so he walked from Mexico There's a, to Canada. Mexico to Canada, yeah. It's called the Pacific Crest Trail, and it's a trail that literally leads you from Mexico all the way up to, to northwestern Canada. And um, he ended up doing it, and it's crazy because it just all happened, like, at the right time. We ended up finding out around my birthday time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on a cruise, and he we ended up finding out on my birthday that we made the goal, and um, it was around the same time he also, like, got to Canada. So and I got my exoskeleton. That was the best birthday present ever. So he hiked 
1,726 miles. Yes. For the Life Goes On Foundation. Yeah. Rock, you know, got him some, some gear, and he rocked a beanie out there, and it's like the shirts, and was literally just That's like uh, eating peanut butter, man. <laughs> like That's crazy. Yeah. Bro, 1,700 miles. Yeah. He walked. Yeah. 1,700 miles. And he, he trained hard, like, before that to get ready for it. So it's like, mm-hmm. that's that's just that that example, act of kindness. Yeah. That, bro, that's out there. That people don't think it's out there, but it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and another act of kindness, too, is, you know, you start this foundation. And what is it like when you see somebody like Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Wearing gear that represents your foundation, how did that feel for you, man? That's that was an amazing. That's definitely like some some very good times in my life. Me, you know, being able to link with those guys yeah. um, during my journey. And the first time I met Steph, he was brand new to the team, mm-hmm. and uh, I just wanted to give him some gear and share my story with him. Yeah. So I went to try to. Um, it was after a game, mm-hmm. and security had stopped me, and they were like, "No, you can't. You can't go talk to him." And I was like, "I just want to give him this stuff, you know, and, and tell him about my mission and my foundation." Yeah. And then he's like, "All right, let me go ask him." And then he asked him, and Steph was with um, his wife Aisha and mm-hmm. uh, and and their baby at the time, who's now like I think she's like ten now or something, mm-hmm. but she was a baby at the time. But yeah. he's like, "Yeah, signal me over." I literally just shared my story with him and told him the mission with Life Goes On Foundation. He was like, man, he was like, wow, or like I'm I'm really like blown away. Like yeah. and um from then on you just start seeing him rocking the rocking gear the during beanie. press conference. Kevin Durant had the bracelet on. I, I seen it. I yeah. seen it. That's that was another crazy story. But yeah, yeah. Meeting Kevin Durant, uh that was uh, so when he was in OKC, he was getting a lot of hate, right? Because yeah. he joined the, the seventy three yeah. and nine Warriors, yeah, and he got a lot of hate, you know, obviously from the OKC fan base, okay. really just every, every like, a lot mm-hmm. of fan base except yeah. the Warriors because we knew it was gonna yeah. be good, <laughs> but uh, it was like winning a lotto getting KD. So yeah. KD comes to the Bay, and uh, and uh, I go to an event. My boy Sean Villasenor, he works with Hennessy, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Yo, pull up to this event tonight. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of good people. It's gonna be cracking, basically. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of people in there, and uh, mm-hmm. you should come out." I go out, and Kevin Durant's like brand new to the team, just yeah. signed, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Yo, I want to just go and give him this bracelet." Mm-hmm. Same type of situation happened. Security stops me at the ropes. It's like, "Nah, you can't go past here." <laughs> It was just like this Steph Curry situation. Just yeah. a couple years later when he joined, and he was like, and then um, KD was like, saw me like talk. He's like, nah, nah, he's cool. Like, and he signaled me. He's like, what's up, mm-hmm. man? He's like, um, just you know, give me some dab. He's like, yeah. you good? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I just wanted to you know give you this wristband, uh, and, and just tell you about my mission if that's cool. Yeah. He's like, yeah, what's, what's up? Of course. And I gave it to him. He put it on. Told him you know it's against you know senseless gun violence and like. He was just like, wow. Like, because yeah. the reason why he wears number 35, he told me that night, is because his mentor and child coach, his coach growing up, died at the age of 35 years old. The same mm-hmm. situation. He was getting in his car and just wrong place, wrong time. Somebody ran up, Dang. robbed him, and shot him. He died at 35. So that's why he wore 35 all throughout his career. So mm-hmm. from then on, that whole year, he rocked the wristband through the whole season. And ESPN did a, did a report on it. And it was like, that really gained a lot of support for the mission. It really was like, you know, helped out get a lot of awareness out there. Yeah, um, definitely. So. Dang. Okay. So, you know, you'd have met some people like Drake, yeah. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant. Is there anybody else out there who you want to meet? Uh, I wanted to meet The Rock, but I actually met The Rock as well. I seen that too. I seen that. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I should have said The Rock too, but that's crazy. Yeah, that's it, crazy. That it was actually here in Hollywood. It was like during a yeah movie premiere uh, at the TLC uh, the, the Chinese mm-hmm. theater over there where they do premieres. Okay, and I'm pushing up 
a ramp, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel somebody like push, start pushing me, and I turn back. I'm like, oh shit, that's Dwayne Johnson. Like he's like, what? You got, he's like, you, you can rest your arms tonight, buddy. I got you. And he <laughs> he really was hella cool like that. Yeah. And pushed me up the ramp, like make sure I was good. He's like, okay, All right, cool. Took you know. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, but if I would want to meet somebody, bro. Um, Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, well, you, you got a superstar lineup over there. I don't know who else could you <laughs> possibly be. Yeah, like, you feel me? Like, that, that, yeah. I guess I would say, I guess I would say MJ. He's oh. like a ghost, you know? Like, yeah. you can never, like, really. He just doesn't do appearances, yeah. really. And mm-hmm. He's not on social media. It's crazy. Um, yeah. Stuff like that. So, okay. he inspired me to, to play ball as a kid. Yeah. So, I, I would mm-hmm. say. MJ plus I love his sneaks. Yeah, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Now, last question, my man. Yeah, I seen it on social media the other day. You was at the Kanye concert, mm. and Kanye himself takes off his jacket and gives it to you. How did that make you feel, man? That was crazy. Uh, that was man. I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. Cause uh, I was in shock. <laughs> like, we had the crazy. Ch- we had the Chase Center where the Warriors play, and there's yeah. so many people there. And um, and I had really good seats. Yeah. Be- uh, I, but my original seat was in the fifth row. Okay. Ain't no way I get to the fifth row, right? With my mm-hmm. wheelchair. So the ushers staff, the Chase Center staff, was like, "Well, we could put you right here." And it was technically the front row. But you have to like you you nobody you're none of your people because I was like five people five of my old yeah. friends they're like n- nobody else can sit here just you, so it was cool but I was also like by myself yeah. and isolated, yeah. so I was like honestly I was just like kind of looking kind of like bored or to myself yeah. I would say, but I kept seeing it when he was performing like look at like look at me or towards me I'm not really it's like hella people behind us right yeah, but. Um, to end his set, he had the number two leather jacket on, and the number two, and, and you the, rocked the and number it's the two, number two, bro, what? December second, number two. He could, have, he had the one jacket on. He didn't give that away. Okay, he threw on the number two jacket to end his show, mm. and he starts walking towards me, taking off his his jacket, kind of like with a grin on his face, and just walks right up and throws it to me, bro, and I'm like. This is crazy. And the fact that it's number two, he Kanye is so famous that he had a line of people <laughs> trying to take a picture with his jacket. Like his jacket just had groupies. It was crazy. <laughs> mm. So so after you get the jacket, everybody coming up to you, they want to take a picture because you got a jacket now. Mm. Oh, that, that, oh, baby, man, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I see that some diehard Kanye fan. That's wow. One 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 like one kid was like He's like a high school kid or something. He's a big Kanye fan. He's like, dude, you are peaking at life right now. <laughs> and I was like, hey, bro, let me smell it, bro. Let yeah. me smell it, bro. Yeah, like, it's crazy. crazy. Well, look, my man, I appreciate everything that you do for the community. It's beautiful to see what the Bay does for you, bro. That's, I ain't gonna lie to that. That's, that's big. All right, to see, to see the love that they give you and how they embrace you, bro, is, Man, it's, that's truly inspiring. Like, anybody will want that from their city. And you have that. That's what it's, Bro, you yeah. have that, bro. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, it's put a lot of work in, man. Exactly. Um, going to juvenile halls, going to high schools, you know, visiting field folks at hospitals. Like, yeah. uh, it's a lot of work put in. But to get the love and appreciation from, from my section, my area, yeah. it's, uh, you know, that's what what makes me feel good and feel mm-hmm. like I'm always aware and cautious though, right? Yeah. I, we're gunshot survivors. Yeah. We're always gonna have that, but I I I feel the love. I definitely feel the genuine love out there. And you gotta come out there, man. All Star Weekend. I gotta come be fun. out there, man. I gotta come out there. Man. You gotta bro. I'm show you around. Come out there, you gotta show me around. Show you the places. Uh-huh. So you go get some good food. Exactly. You know what I mean? Hey, look, I remember back in the day you hit me up. You was like, bro, if you ever want to fly some planes, when you come out there. Let me know. I'm trying to fly, bro. You trying to fly a plane? I'm trying to fly a little something, something. <laughs> My boy, he's also in a chair, bro. For real? He flies. He's the one that you know. Team. Oh, 
Oh, bro, come on. I, I need to go. I need you to, need a meeting. I need, I need to fly. I need yeah, to yeah, fly. yeah. Well, look, my man, look, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. I had an amazing weekend with Likewise, you. Likewise. At bro. the Abilities Expo, bro. Hey, look, hey, hey man. Yeah, we yeah. really turned it up out there. Yes, sir. We man. really turned it up out there. So I appreciate you coming on the my podcast, God. man. Keep up appreciate the good it. work, man. I'm appreciate proud it. of you. Thank you. This guy is just, man, doing great things, bro. You're the Thank face you. right now. And just, like, continue to keep up your good work. And appreciate it. Just love everything you're doing, bro. Thank you.